Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to another video. And in this video, we're gonna have a look at the uh, sprues or the frames that I've gotten uh, from Mortal Games. So each of these are just one, one sprue uh, from each of the different periods from the uh, Epic Battle range. Uh, so we have the uh, French uh, frame, we have the uh, English Civil War frame, we have the uh, British cavalry, heavy cavalry frame, we have the American Civil War frame and then the uh, Prussian Prussian uh, line infantry frame. And these are basically all of the uh, epic battles uh, miniatures that are available at the moment. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to actually like go through all of them. Sort of like just to see or just to share my thoughts on all of this because I, I didn't think I'll be starting a new scale. Um, and I didn't think I'd be starting a new scale in plastic. In fact, you know, there are a lot of my thoughts concerning the uh, Warlord Games um, setup. Uh, started off as, as worries, but they actually became, uh, you know, something uh, I got quite comfortable with. And I'm not so sure if it's because I, I painted a whole lot of these uh, these uh, frames, or is it because uh, there's something to it that I, I maybe haven't figured out yet. So we're going to go through all of them uh, one by one. Uh, hopefully, um, yeah, I can share some insights. I know a lot of folks who uh, have messaged me either on my um, Instagram or DM me um, here uh, at, on the channel and ask me what, what my thoughts were like painting because uh, they either got one of these sets and they're about to start painting. Um, and I want to say um, that um, it's, it's, the, it's more or less the same as painting anything uh, under certain under 15 mm whether it's 15 or 10s it's more or less the same feel it's just that because of the way the uh, the sculpts are, are laid out right because there's like 10 to a base you know it, it's a little bit little bit more difficult I think and also a little bit more easy so you don't have to worry too much about the overall paint job um yeah so let's let's have a look at all of these uh, all of these frames so let's take a look at the very first frame I got free from War Games Illustrated Force Raid. This was a very exciting release at the time for me. It felt like something new was coming to the hobby. Here were miniatures made out of plastic and sized at an unusual 13.5 millimeter. They were also made from colored plastic. Something the folks doing Gundam were already very used to. The color of the British frame was red. Perfect. The basing of the elements of this figure was set. The base imprint was standardized for infantry and cavalry. They both used the same base. The base was designed with holes for slaughters and these were same for both infantry and cavalry. The other two sizes of the base were one size for the NCO and one size for the artillery. Anyone can see that the people at World Games had a plan. Get those figures from the box onto the gaming table as fast as you can. My first attempt at doing 13.5 plastics was a slight struggle. Now, I painted a lot of 15mm miniatures for the Bellus Antiquitatis, and although from a distance they look about the same size, being smaller made painting the figures a slightly bigger challenge. Doing 15mm figures, I tried to put as much detail as I can for the figure. This was easier when you're painting one figure at a time. 15mm figures were often sold like this. With issue 408 of War Games Illustrated, you had the option of either receiving the French Heavy Cavalry or the British Heavy Cavalry. I secretly wanted the British frame and when the issue arrived, I got what I wanted. So it was a great start. I was so excited about doing a video for these cavalry figures that I even got the different cavalry types accidentally mixed up while reviewing the frame. <laughs> With this frame, I learned to paint enough detail on each figure so that it would look good from a distance. If when I took a few steps back, they looked great, I would be happy. 
in essence, this was the approach I did for the Minifix miniatures in the mid-90s that I bought. That was the plan. However, when I started to put paint down, there was more need to put more detail in. The scalps seemed to call for it. They didn't look so bad, I thought. I had problems putting the bases together in March Column as the position of the horses that were set didn't allow for this. The frame came with the artillery and these were set as well with slots. The artillery design for this was interesting, leaving no room for experimentation, but you could get this on the table very, very quickly. My painting is not so great, but these look fantastic to me. This was my first attempt and this new range was something to learn. The learning process was a slow one. The first sprue on the frame took a while, but I realized this was important important to the process of me painting many more of these. Regardless, I did paint this quite quickly. Wargames Illustrated 410 then announced that they will be adding an infantry frame free with that issue. Why? <laughs> yes, please! I waited for my issue to come and when it did, I got the French frame. I secretly wanted the uh, British frame so I could have a small force very quickly. Instead, I now had two forces. I had never done any French Napoleonic before, so this was a little bit of a step outside my comfort zone. I actually spent a lot of time researching what regiment I wanted to paint and also figuring out what my process for these figures will be. Also, which, which blue do I use? Now, looking back, this was a very good experience and I think it made me ready for the epic battles range. The French came in blue, so I honestly could have just played with them unpainted. But what's the fun in that? With this frame, I got my first look at the NCO figure and my first attempt at painting it. Doing this figure felt like doing a 15mm figure, so it was slightly familiar. And I'm glad that the issue that the frame came with helped with the color guide. There are two types of infantry that comes with the frame. They give you the line infantry, <laughs> well, in line. They also give you the Voltigeurs, light infantry in skirmish order. The skirmishers did not have slaughters and you could place them any way you like on the base. The line infantry came in grey coats as well. Now, this variety broke down the monotony of the painting process somehow for me. Looking back now, I think this helped get the regiment done very quickly. Perhaps I was painting a lot of DBA, but instinctively I based two minis per base when I think I think I'm supposed to do four this regiment honestly could have come out so much better I'll probably adjust the colors slightly when I start churning out the regiments for games but I like the combined arms element of this frame it feels like a more complete frame I honestly thought this kind of kindness from Wargames Illustrated and World of Games was already more than I could ask for <laughs> but then came issue 414 the Prussians are here. As if time to the timeline of Waterloo, the Prussians arrived four issues later. This time, you are either going to get the Prussian Line Infantry or the Land War. Both were fine for me. However, I was slightly happy I got the Line Infantry. If I got the Land War frame, I would have to pick out the figures with no boots in order to emulate the ragtag feel for the force. Something which perhaps I would not have been so good at. The line infantry frame came with the basic line infantry and the rifles. You got one NCO and one artillery piece. It was at this point when I received my Waterloo starter set and I can confirm that the infantry frames all had the same makeup. This made it easier to plan my purchases as I was able to make a rough estimation of the amount of frames needed. The Prussian frame came in black. This means that pattern, if they release Austrians, they may be white plastic, Russians dark green plastic, and maybe even yellow plastic for the Spanish. If you do not want to paint all of these figures, these jelly bean colours on the table would just be as attractive to show. I was honestly tempted to spray them black and leave them at that, but I found a bottle of dark blue and well, days later, I was done with the frame. 
up till this point, the excitement and enthusiasm were high. Painting all these epic Battle Waterloo figures and the starter on the shelf, I was done. Looking at them now, the whole regiment came together very, very well. There's enough subtle differences to tell them apart. Like many regiments at this scale, they look brilliant from afar. And then came the ACW. I don't know much about the American Civil War. I have a basic idea of what it was and what it achieved, but I was not aware of the different battles. The American Civil War miniatures was the last thing on my mind until I saw a regiment that someone painted. I then remembered an article I read in a Strategy and Tactics magazine about the uh, colored troops in the Civil War. The article was very well written and was pretty much a jump off point to learn all I could before painting. The American Civil War epic battles was the first range at this scale released by World of Games. The frames were the same for both Union and Confederates, the only difference being the colour of the plastic it was made from. Upon retrospect, I think perhaps ACW was a good idea to launch a new range and scale using new material. With both factions using the same frame, costs would be kept at a low. Well, you know what? Risky if you ask me. I guess this is why I don't run a miniature gaming company. I put an order in for one ACW frame on the Warlord Games web store and by the time it arrived, I was more or less ready to tackle the frame. I wanted to try the darker skin tones from the Army Painter skin tone set. So this was going to be an all-round test. This frame was first of its kind for this line and this range. So despite having good scalps, it was overshadowed by what came later. Now, since I painted the Waterloo figures first, the ACW figures felt a little less impressive somehow. That and the fact that nine sprues almost looked the same made this project very hard to do. I often found myself wanting to paint something else. And once I actually did, I painted a dragon and it came out colourful. I think it was a simple reaction to painting all the blue and skin tone on the same sprue nine times. It took a little longer than the rest of the 13.5 frames that I painted beforehand, but when it was done, it looked great. Having it done with uh, regimental flags just made the whole regiment come alive. If this was going to be the only American Civil War figures I ever paint, I'm very happy with how they turned out. Now, as if to reset the cycle, the English Civil War range came out. War Games Illustrated and Warlord Games again made sure you got a free frame. Just like the American Civil War frame before, the English Civil War frame had the same frame for both Royalists and Parliamentarians. You can see the difference. You can see the improvements. I'm secretly glad that they did this period later in their production timeline. Now, when I first got into Warlord Games in 2010, I got the infantry set to paint. Those were done by the then popular spray, touch up and dip method. And somehow I wanted to see if I did the same method for the 13.5 millimeter, if the effect would be same. You know what? They were better. Painting this one regimen made me have the urge to paint a few more. That was a very strange feeling to have just thinking about it. However, of a cup of tea, I realized that this range would be the one with the most flexibility in terms of color and perhaps the most colorful of all the ranges. I went and tried a new basic method, which I saw online, and this itself gave a sense of freedom I did not have with the rest of the range. The figures look good when done, and I think these figures benefited from all the mistakes and practice I did with the previous figures. I think it's also because I am comfortable with the scale and can get a little bit more out of each frame and each brew. You know what, it's only been a couple of years, but the 13.5mm already has a sizable range over a few periods. So, so what's in the future, you may ask? You know what, how about some Hail Caesar? <laughs> how about some Romans? Some Gauls? Some elephants? Yeah. 
that's something to look forward to. Right, so there you have it. All the frames uh, reviewed, uh, showcased. Um, I'm actually quite glad I, I did this. Uh, to put this on the shelf, it was very nice, very, very attractive. Um, and this is five different factions, right? Um, one, two, three, four, five factions, different factions, different periods. I can only imagine if I were to stay on, on one of the periods on how it would look on Mars, right? I mean, it's nice to to uh, speculate what it looks like in the pictures, but when you actually see them out, you know, set up, oh man, they look really, really great. Hopefully, um, at some point, we'll, we'll be doing a fully painted uh, either battle report uh, just to show you how, how nice they look um, on the table. And if anything, if, if there's anything I can take away or if anything I can share, they look nice. They look really, really, really nice. And um, I think I think the, the more ordered and regimented mind that I have likes this because it feels it feels regimented, you know. Um, and I and I like that, you know. Um, and I also like the fact that you know uh, I can decide how much detail I want to go into this. These look really great from a distance, um, but I've also tried my best because I'm, I'm shooting videos, right? Tried my best to make them look good up close as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for the epic battles. I'm quite curious on, uh, as I said, on what's going to come. And uh, you can be sure that if it's uh, if it comes out, I'll probably give it a swing. Why not? If you like this video, like, subscribe, and um, yeah, don't forget to enjoy painting the figures. <laughs>